Hello, this is Paul Hannon from Fair School Downtown. This is a video tutorial for creating a self-correcting exam using Google Forms and spreadsheets. So it's finals week here and I just gave my 70 question world history final to my classes and had the results graded instantaneously so students knew their scores within 30 seconds of the final being over. Now I'm not a big fan of multiple choice exams as an assessment, but there is a place for them. So uh, if you want to save yourself some time and give feedback quicker, follow along and create your own Google Form exam or quiz. Uh, right here, I'm just in my documents here. So I'm actually gonna start by opening um, my Oscars ballot from a couple of years ago, um, uh, where I had people over at my house actually, and we just voted on who was going, use the Google Form to vote on who was going to win the Oscars. Um, and you can use this, you can use a pre-existing document to have it created uh, to autocorrect, or um, you can start a new one with it. Either one works fine. Um, I'm showing you one, two actually today that already have data in it, just because it's more interesting to see something with the data. So a quick background on, for those of you that are new to Google Forms, if you go up here, uh, this is actually what it looked like to the, the friends of mine that filled out this form here. So they just type their name in, uh, who they picked for best picture, leading role, etc., etc., etc. et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera. And, um, if you want to learn how to create Google Forms, um, they're super, super, super easy and simple. This one is not a tutorial on how to do that. This is on how to make it correct itself. So um, one thing I want to show you though, so once they submit their answers, it goes in here. And uh, if you don't know this function yet, you show some responses is another really cool thing. Um, so here it will show, you know, it looks like 63% of the people that filled out this form for me thought that the King's speech was going to win. It actually, I'll show you in my world history final how that works really good for bigger data sets. But now we're looking, uh, in this case, we're looking at multiple choice questions. And again, it only works for multiple choice questions to have it autocorrect. The first thing you need though is an answer key. So in this case here, uh, I actually just typed in an answer key at the bottom. Um, so I typed in here answers and then the important thing is that the answer key matches exactly the wording of um, the, the options that you can fill out in the exam. So if I were to misspell the King speech, uh, that would be counted as incorrect. Uh, another way to do it is to actually take the exam and put the name in as answer key, and then uh, like take the exam first. Um, that's actually the better way to do this, and that's what I did for my World History Final, and you'll see that when I open that other document up. Uh, actually, maybe I'll show you that quickly now. Here's the final. This is just with um, one of my classes of 30 students having filled it out. And so you can see right here, uh, I went through first uh, the day before and filled out the answer key with all the correct answers. Um, and then, you know, students' answers were then filled in here. And it shows you them with the time step there and their name. So uh, then if you go to forms, uh, maybe just to show you in case you're curious, this is what the actual final exam looked like to the kids. So when I say multiple choice, it actually can be anything where they don't type an answer and the answer is selecting. So it can be click boxes and a whole bunch of different um, sections there. So uh, let me go back to the actual form and show you what I'm what the whole point of the tutorial here is how to make it autocorrect. So I have the answer key filled in. It's a little bit tricky, but not really. You don't actually have to know um, much about the way spreadsheets work, Excel, Numbers, um, Google Forms. Um, you just have to know one particular formula. And that formula is called Array Formula. Uh, it's similar to count if, if you've used that before. But basically what it's going to do is compare one row or column of data to another row or column of data. So, and I'm going to just show you right here. So the first part right here is Array Formula right there. Um, and then in this case, we're adding them up the comparison. Um, so you're just going to copy paste that into yours to start. The second set of numbers here are the two different data sets it's comparing. So let me click off that and show you on a different set of answers here. Let me page down maybe a little bit here. So, um, okay, so for this one right here, uh, so you can see the beginning is still the same, array, formula, sum, and then right here is the two data sets. The first one, this first number right now it's showing in green, is um, the numbers that you want it to be compared to. So this is the answer key. So it says C2 colon B T2. So that is showing you, and you can see the green boxes on here. That is showing you up here, the green boxes are what it's being compared to. 
then underneath that, um, down here in the orange, is the column that's, that is doing the comparing, the students' answers in this case. Um, and that's right there. You can manually type in these numbers, or you can use the selection box to enter them in. Um, let me show you, uh, let me page down a little bit more here. Um, and then it will, well, maybe before I do that, it will show you here the total of how many they got correct. So this student got 64 out of 70 correct. Um, so if I page down to the very, very bottom here, um, I'm just going to end up actually deleting this person's and showing you a little bit of how I do it. So the first place to start really is always I actually make the, the form here, uh, the, it correct itself for the, correct the answer key, meaning you should get 70 out of 70 or 100 out of 100 or 10 out of 10, whatever your quiz or exam is happening to show. So I'm having um, array formula sum. This first section here is what it's being compared. You're comparing this to that and you are getting a total of 70. Um, once I have that corrected, I just copy that whole column. It will give me that whole formula. And then I go back down here. Sorry, it's a little jumpy here. And I hit paste. And it's working on it for me. Okay, now you notice it said 70 out of 70. Huh, that's not right. But actually that is correct. Because what I did here is when I pasted it, Google Forms was smart enough to change its numbers to what I thought it wanted. It's comparing two columns the same or two rows the same rows to each other so what you need to do then is go manually back and make sure it's comparing to that first answer key row which I just happen to remember off the top of my head is C2 B T2 um, and then you hit enter and there you go 60 out of 70 uh, you also notice the last thing here is this column on the right the last column uh, this here shows the percentage they got right and that's for me, so I can quickly tell them what score they got. And also, I actually have it set so it's color-coded. So this is super, super easy. Um, I just insert a column to the right of this last column here. And I took um, BU28. So that's, you can tell that is actually, uh, so this is the 28 and this is the BU. So it's saying you take the number from BU28 and you divide it by 70 because 70 was the total number of questions and that gives you the percentages. And then from there, to make it color-coded, and that's just so I can do a quick, real quick glance and say, oh, well look at, these are the scores that my students got. You can right-click on that and do conditional formatting. And you can see right here, I have these different setups. I have 85% and above is gonna be green, you know, 73 to 84% is going to be blue, and then yellow, and then red for the students that really struggled with this exam. Uh, I promise to show you also what it looks like, the summary responses. These are the, the color coding here and the summary responses are two really good teal, tools, not for me correcting them, but for me just kind of getting a quick glance of how my class did. So I'm going to click on show summary responses here. And um, you'll see here um, for, you know, any question, it will give me a quick readout of how students did. So for this set question here, um, this person fought for equal rights for men and women, and they had a selection of these different uh, people from the Enlightenment and the French Revolution, and 68% said Mary Wilsoncraft, which was correct. Um, so it's a really quick way for me to be able to look at my answers and say, oh, yep, that they really seemed as a class learn that concept. I mean, this one here, 89%, only two students had this question wrong on what kind of lifestyle did Louis XVI live. And it's really nice for me to do a quick skim and get a sense for how students did and what their knowledge is. I mean, um, in this one, for example, 100% um, of kids got correct what nationalism is. Um, and it's a great, another way to use Google Forms to give you quick, instant feedback on how your students are doing. Well, hopefully you found this tutorial useful and helpful. If you have any questions about this process specifically or just general technology and social studies education questions, uh, I'd be happy to help out and how I can and answer any questions. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is to tweet me at um, PM Hannon. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot. Good luck.